Hey you, and welcome. My name is Mike, and in this old video we're going to Kentucky to talk about the story of a pilot. Yes, a pilot. Uh, he's quite the guy, uh, genuinely, and you know, if, uh, if I can just say this up front, this story is... Bananas. I still have kind of trouble wrapping my, my noodle around the whole thing, the whole story, so uh, hey, look forward to that. Christian Kit Martin is his name. Flying was his game, first for the military, then commercial. But that wasn't his only game. Maybe. There's a few twists in this one right up until the end, so... You wanna give it a goop? Kentucky we are in, specifically a place called Pembroke. Pembroke is a pretty small town located in the southwestern piece of the state. Where, uh, I guess like the drum is in the Kentucky Fried Chicken? It is in Christian County and is home to less than 1,000 people, maybe about 900. Ah, pfft, wanted to quickly running out of things to say. Here, guys. It is dominated by a granary, and if you're looking to go on a tour of downtown Pembroke, you got a couple of churches, uh, a dollar store, and a road that leads out of Pembroke, which is probably the biggest attraction in town. So why are we talking about it? Well, you know, that's where our story is based, and it begins. And the begins begins in 2015. At around 8.45 on the 19th of November 2015, the Pembroke Fire Department were putting on their jackets and their boots because, you know, ding ding ding, there was a fire. There was a car fire that morning. Rosetown Road bisects Pembroke and swiftly heads off into rural country. And smoke was coming from that rural country, maybe, maybe a mile out of town. Just off Rosetown Road on farmland, a car was burning to shite. The smell of kerosene was strong and when the fire was put out, inside on the back seats they discovered well, uh, burning skeletons, essentially. There were two people inside, more or less burnt beyond all recognition. They would be obviously identified through DNA at a later time. And the vehicle, the car they were found in, was traced to a house using its, its reg. To, it was traced to a house in Pembroke, downtown Pembroke. It was traced to the home of Calvin and Pamela Phillips. It was their car, and when police searched their home, inside they found a turd victim, shot to death at the bottom of the stairs in the cellar of 443 South Main Street, Pembroke. Blood was found outside the house too, so whoever did this, well, they did it there, and then brought them outside of town. When the police were investigating, you know, it appeared that a fire had actually been attempted to, to, be, to be started inside the house, but it put itself out. So whoever did this tried to burn down the house, and when that failed, they took two of the victims out of town. So who are the victims? Well, the victims in this triple homicide were all local Pembrokeans, middle-aged folk, fairly, you know, no bad history to them at all, just respectable people. The two victims found in the car were Pamela Phillips, 53 years old, and Ed Dancero, 63 years old. The victim in the house was Pam's husband, Calvin Phillips, 58 years old. All victims had been shot to death, then Pam and Ed were taken, taken away in the car, and then the car was set on fire. Ed, he was a neighbor, he lived next door to the Phillips, they, they shared a driveway. A phone was found outside the house, covered in blood, and it was determined to be Pam's. So this was the inciting, inciting incident, if you want to call it that. Three people, they lived next door to each other, were shot to death, uh, horrifically. A big ol' pile of merde. Excuse my French. None of them had criminal histories. Calvin, he worked in the military. Pam, a stay-at-home mom for most of her life. Ed, a professional jazz pianist. So who'd want to kill them? Well, very quickly, a person of interest was named in the case. A neighbor, again, a neighbor once again, 
of Ed Dancero and the Phillips. He was in fact taken into custody by a SWAT team the very next day on the 20th of November and his name was Christian Kit Martin. Christian was a major in the United States Army, but before that he was a little baby boy born in 1969. He started his career in the military at age 17, following in his family footsteps. First becoming a cavalry scout, eventually becoming a ranger, and finally an Apache attack helicopter pilot at the fine rank of major. And he was, he was highly decorated. He had done tours in all the places people, you know, army people do tours and had been married to a woman named Stacy Johnson. He had three kids with her before later divorcing. At the time of the murders in uh, 2015, Christian Kit Martin, he was stationed in nearby Fort Campbell, maybe 30 minutes from downtown Pembroke, moving to Pembroke in 2011. So why would the police knock on the door of Christian Kit Martin? Apparently, you know, respect. Some people even called him a hero. In, why would they knock at his door in relation to something so uh, unheroic? The police would detain him for a few days and they would eventually let him go, but he would be like number, number one person. In fact, they would let him go for a whole four years until, well, we'll get there. All right, so let's back up. Here we go, the life of Christian Martin. It's uh, his personal one. A little bit complicated. Actually, you know, scratch that. His professional one is quite complicated also. Not complicated in a good way, but does complicated ever mean that. The main crux of it is, investigators, the reason they zoned in on Christian Kit Martin so quickly, the neighbor, is that they learned Calvin Phillips was due to testify against Christian Kit Martin. Some grudges in this one. Christian had been married once before. Three kids. After his first marriage, he had married again, this time to a woman named Joan, Joan Harmon. She had three kids of her own. Joan and Christian were going through a divorce at the time of the murders. The reason they were going through that divorce was that Joan claimed Christian had been uh, physically and sexually abusing her and her children. And Joan was very close with Pamela and Calvin Phillips and also Ed Dancero. They took her under their wing. They would look out for and after her. Together, the four of them, Calvin, Pam, Joan, and Ed, they would take concealed weapon classes together as if they were worried someone was after them. They would become so close that one day, while Joan was you know, taking her stuff, packing her boxes out of uh, Christian's home, Calvin and Pamela w would help her, help her move. And while they were moving boxes and bits and bobs, they found something. A couple of military CDs that were top secret. Not the kind of stuff you think that would just be lying around. They thought that so much, they handed them in to the FBI. This was like spy shit, and they were like, Martin shouldn't have this lying around. Remember, Calvin, he was in the military himself. Stuff on the discs was uh, apparently kill lists, so, you know, uh, it's great. Numbers and dates and numbers and... I think that's the shit, man. Calvin also found images of Joan's son with red welts and marks on his back, like he had been beaten. See, Joan had, a few years before this, taken Christian to a civil court over abuse claims, but the judge said she didn't meet the burden of proof necessary. So now it would go to a more, um, a more serious court, you know, not a civil one now, a military one. This was a very unpleasant divorce between Christian and Joan, but throughout this entire story, what's true and what's false? Doesn't get any clearer, let me tell you. So for all of this, Christian Martin was due to be court-martialed for, for downloading, you know, sensitive military data onto his personal laptop, something he did uh, apparently while he was stationed in the Middle East. Then he was also being court-martialed for the, the abuse claims. Joan claimed, you know, Christian was abusing her and the kids. Technically, it was for, quote, violations of the Uniform Code of Military Justice for sexual assault, other assault charges, conduct unbecoming an officer, mishandling classified information, and communicating a threat. Now, Christian, he was heavily defended during this time because it was actually big news at the time. Like, his first wife, Stacy, she would say, that's not like him. He's not a dangerous, abusive person. Hey, 
Not at home, at least. You know, to anybody. And she had known him for decades. She was right behind him, saying, this is bullshit. Joan is lying. He would never hurt the kids. The classified data? Okay, maybe. Abuse? No. Many men's rights groups also stood up for him, uh, including the National Coalition for Men. Very serious stuff, folks, especially when they post pictures like this. That article, by the way, was written by Christian at a later date. So, Christian was being court-martialed for a few charges. Some of them could lead to serious jail time. When, in November 2015, Calvin, Pamela, and Ed were murdered. Calvin was due to testify at Christian's court-martial. No joke, literally two weeks after he was murdered. Hence, the police immediately zoned in on Christian. New developments tonight in a triple murder investigation in Pembroke, Kentucky. Suspicion has been on a Fort Campbell Army major. Now we have court documents showing detectives are hunting for evidence in his vehicles. Before detectives searched this Pembroke home, they got this search warrant allowing them to look there in a major Christian Kit Martin's three cars. The warrant says Christian County detectives are looking for any blood, bodily fluids, hair, fingerprints, or any evidence linking the Army major to a triple murder. Three people that um, have disappeared in, in all of this. Two people found dead last Thursday in a burned car. One person shot to death in this house, now identified as Calvin Phillips. Fox 17 obtained this document showing Phillips had been on the government's witness list and planned to testify against Major Martin in an upcoming trial. His trial date scheduled less than two weeks out from when deputies found Phillips murdered. My client had absolutely no contact with them whatsoever. The military confined Major Martin Friday for four days in Fort Campbell Barracks. According to this protective order, it did so because he had been named a person of interest in the death investigation of a witness scheduled to testify in Martin's court-martial. Martin's accused of sex assault, molesting two children, and not caring properly for classified information. The court-martial was delayed until 2016, and in the end, Christian was found guilty by the court-martial on lesser charges on two counts of mishandling classified information and two counts of simple assault. Joan, however, would not be too happy about this, because uh, if he had been found guilty on all the counts, she would have received a settlement from the military. Christian would get three months in jail uh, for that and be dismissed uh, from the military, losing kind of Christian kind of losing everything, like uh, his his life. Not not to mention you know benefits and retirement and all that. So now we're in 2016. The murders have occurred, but uh, Christian is number one person of interest. He'd been detained for a few days, but. The police didn't really have any evidence uh, pointing to him other than what seemed like an obvious motive that this guy was going to testify against them. They didn't have anything on him though. They searched his house, his car, they did DNA samples, fingerprints, all that and a great big fuck all was found. He had an alibi, he was at home with his new girlfriend Laura Spencer. Had nothing to do with anything. I want to first talk about um, what happened with with all of this, <laughs> the neighbors, uh -huh. and kind of explain your connection to these people. How do you explain your connection to the murder victims? Well, like I said, there wasn't really any kind of connection there, relationship. Um, you know, like I said, I had um, not met them when I first moved here in the fall of 2011 with the woman I thought was my wife, Joan Harmon. In 2016, Christian would do an interview in it, saying, you know, he had nothing to do with the murders. And also, get this, that Joan and Calvin had been having an affair. The only connection between Joan and Calvin was what? They were having an affair uh, that was witnessed by multiple people. The town police officer, Mark Goforth, uh, my contractor, Ken, um, and my neighbor, Billy. All the, everybody in town knew what was going on while I was at work every day. And his wife would leave early, and like I said, I would leave early, and we would come back late. So they were together all day long, and they didn't try to really hide it or anything like that. So your only connection to the Phillips was your ex? Pretty much, yeah. And so she was over there, I guess what you thought, was working on the house with him. She would say that they were working on business projects. You know, the police officer walking in on him and having seen them together having sex, and he said, well, I was naked with my dog. And my dog is a German Shepherd, so he has blonde hair, and he showed her blonde hair, which is kind of funny, but... 
Whoa. Uh, <laughs> he'd rather have place. sex with his dog yeah, oh than admit to having sex wow. with, a, wow. with this woman. And he would also say, I have no motive. The motive they're saying is I would kill him out for the truck. No, not at all. I would have no motive to kill Calvin because, get this, he was supposed to be a witness at Christian's court-martial, right? But for the defense... Why would she make these claims if they weren't true? She swore to me that that's what she was going to do when I asked her for a divorce. The first words out of her mouth, and my adult daughter, Kenzie, was standing right there, is, I will ruin you if you divorce me. I will ruin your career. I will ruin your life. I know how to do it. The star witness in the case is murdered two weeks before he testifies. Can you see why people would say, this guy, they got to look at this guy. He, he's suspicious. Yeah, until you realize the background so that I'm trying to tell you here, you know, that he was my star witness, um, that um, all the other allegations that she's made and they continually raise the allegations over the time, over three and a half years, were all disproven until, uh, especially on the civilian side, those were all quickly thrown out. I passed a polygraph for the Army. You know, the Army JAG prosecutors made this whole case against me happen by going to her and offering her money and benefits to make false allegations against me. And that's the bigger problem, that there's a bigger story here about what's going on in the military right now against all service members. If you're in the military right now and, you're, and um, you have a wife, or you, you can you be a woman, you know, your husband, whatever, you have an ex-spouse, um, girlfriend, boyfriend, somebody just doesn't like you, all they have to do is make one phone call and your life is ruined. Because is there evidence that you committed this abuse? No. That you did these things? If he was your star witness, why would they have suspected you, even as a person of interest, in his murder? I don't know. What I do know um, is what I was told is that a woman called a newspaper or a radio station or something and said that, not the police for some reason, because that would be recorded, but said that Major Chris Martin in the yellow house across the street, there's evidence of the murders there, he did it. If you go there, you'll find it. Well, you know, like I was telling you before, nobody in the neighborhood here knows me as Major right. Chris Martin. Everybody knows me as Kit. I don't wear my rank at home. I'm, I'm just Kit. And then I interact with all you know, my neighbors like that. And so they, none of them could have made that phone call. It had to be my ex. See, before the murders, while Christian was preparing for his defense for the court martial, he hired a private detective to basically investigate stuff. This private detective interviewed Calvin two weeks before he was killed. And in it, Calvin said he knew nothing about any abuse at all. It was recorded. Today's date is November 2nd, 2015. She said she was afraid of him, that she was concerned for her well. She said, hearing this, she never told you that he's molesting the kids? No, I don't ever remember he's that. He's raped me? No. He sodomized me? No. He beats me? No. So was Joan making it all up? And if Christian didn't kill him, and according to himself, he had no reason to, who did? Also, it would turn out that Joan, uh, while she was married to Christian, she was also married to somebody else, a sly dog. She would get shit for that, because it's bigamy. I don't even know what you refer to Joan as, she's, I guess, your ex-wife, even though you were never married, or? Uh, the marriage was voided for okay. bigamy, so right. technically we were never married at all, all. so, so I just call the uh, ex-bigamist, whatever. Right. She would plead guilty, and in February of 2016, was given five years unsupervised probation. So the whole thing, the divorce, there's really no real reason for the whole acrimonious divorce, right? Is that ironic? That Morissette song really screwed me up. Christian would also come out in that interview with some unsubstantiated uh, claims against Calvin, a guy who he said was, you know, gonna vouch for him during the court-martial. Hmm, interesting. There was also rumors that he was, he and his wife owned the brothel down in St. Elmo. Everybody, my neighbors here thought maybe he was into drugs, because he was passed out in the road, like, OD'd, like, a couple months before the murders too. So he was just like in the middle of the road, passed out and they, they called the ambulance and stuff like that. So, wow. Um, you know, somebody wanted to kill him. You know, if I'd wanted to kill him, I could, that would have been a great time to go do it. I'd just right. run him over. Well, it, <laughs> he was so, just sitting out there. There's some other allegations and, and things that he was involved with. After that, the triple homicide case would go quite cold. The murders of three neighbors in the small town of Pembroke, Kentucky, is still unsolved. But for the first time tonight, the family of two of the victims are sharing their stories, talking about why Cal and Pam Phillips 
had been afraid before their deaths. That's right. This family says not only were Cal and Pam afraid, but they were too. It's part of the reason they've never spoken until now. But they say they're no longer staying silent about what they knew before the murders and what they're now doing to help bring out the truth. My parents felt that they were being surveilled, watched. Matt Phillips says his mother, Pam, told him that she saw their across the street neighbor, Army Major Kit Martin, watching and walking in the fields by their home. A man, a Channel 4 IT team investigation found last year, linked to the Phillips by more than geography. The family of the Phillips would offer $100,000 for any information. Christian, now ex-military, would get a job flying as a commercial pilot in 2018 for a subsidiary of American Airlines. He, he'd become a first officer with PSA Airlines. Then, on the 11th of May, 2019, in Muhammad Ali International Airport in Louisville. By the way, I've gotten more corrections on how you're supposed to pronounce Louisville. Probably more than anything else I've ever said. I don't give a shit how it's supposed to be pronounced. While they were taxiing off, heading for North Carolina, where Christian Martin now lived, having left Pembroke, he was arrested. Coming to you today to announce an indictment in a triple homicide that occurred in 2015. Christian Richard Martin for three counts of murder, one count of arson, one count of attempted arson, burglary in the first degree, and three counts of tampering with physical evidence. Apparently he was arrested, you know, taken off the plane in front of all the passengers in handcuffs. They said it was like a movie scene. He even did the mugshot on his pilot's uniform because he wanted everybody to know he's a pilot. Typical. He was indicted on three counts of murder and arson for the killings of Calvin and Pamela Phillips and Ed Dancero. Christian Kit Martin would plead not guilty. The trial would begin in 2021. So to sum all this up, because this is a quite a, it's quite a confusing case. Christian was divorcing his second wife, Joan. During the process of that, uh, she accused him of uh, abusing her and the kids, of being just a general dickhead, and uh, also of having classified military intelligence on his personal computer. Christian gets court-martialed, and in return he accuses her of bigamy, which is true, and that she's a liar. Witnesses, friends of the alleged victim, all die, brutally. Christian then gets fucked out of the army, and the triple murder case with no real evidence, goes cold. Then in 2019, Christian is arrested for that triple murder. Joan was saying, this was a long time coming. He should have been arrested ages ago. I never imagined anything like this would happen to me. For the first time, the woman who connects them all is speaking out, but with one condition. You've even asked us not to reveal where we are right now. Yes, I'm scared for my children. But would the trial get to the truth? Would it? Would it? The motive, the prosecution would say, was that Calvin was going to testify against him and this would cost... Well, I mean, could and would lead to jail time for Christian, but more importantly, he was, he was a career army man, a career military guy, an officer. And so that would cost him everything that was dear to him, not just retirement and stuff, his, his life. So why Pam and Ed if only Calvin uh, was testifying? Well, uh, wrong place, wrong time. They said he killed Calvin and tried to burn him on the morning of the 18th of November 2015. However, when he was unsuccessful at burning him and on the house down, he returned later when Pamela was there, killed her and also killed Ed who happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Then he returned later that night and drove the bodies of Pamela and Ed out of town and burned them. Why he just took their bodies though and, you know, what, um, what was he expecting to happen? Why not hide them somewhere? Now at trial a few things come out and, and at this point we learn what the prosecution's evidence against Christian actually is other than motive. Christian owned a lot of guns and he owned ones, you know, the same caliber that the victims were killed with. Not only that, a spent shell casing was found at the scene matching one of Christian's guns. Now, that spent uh, shell casing that was found at the Phillips house, it was found five months after the murders, uh, after the police had done you know, their, their search of the house. It was found by Calvin's sister who's cleaning up the place. Key piece of evidence five months after the murders were committed. 
interesting. Also, cell phone data would show that on the morning of the murders, Christian had been in the Rosetown Road area, which obviously he said he was at home with his girlfriend. Also, okay, and this is really bizarre. Christian's dog tags, his dog tags were found in the Phillips house. I mean, if Christian was some, you know, Green Beret, Rambo, you know, whatever, would he leave, why would he leave his dog tags at the crime scene? The prosecution said he must have, you know, taken them off while he was cleaning up. But it doesn't even look like he did much of a cleanup. And A, he would have known the police would immediately go to the Phillips house, right, and find a body that he didn't bother clean. That whole part is bizarre to me. Why he would leave, you know, may as well have left his driver's license, you know, I did it. Christian said he was home all night. He was, however, up in the middle of the night, early a.m. to tend to his dogs. And that, interestingly, was at the same time another neighbour, separate neighbour in Pembroke, heard a loud bang. That's when, the prosecution would say, he drove the bodies of Pam and Ed out. This same neighbour would investigate the source of the bang the following morning, leading to the car, you know, being discovered on fire and calling 911. The defence would say no. Christian didn't do it. Calvin was going to testify in his benefit at the court-martial, right? And get this, you know who really would have been screwed by Calvin testifying? Not Christian, no. Joan. The defense pointed at Joan as being the real murderer. If you divorce me, I will ruin your life. And I know how to do it. Well, she sure got that right. The evidence in this case that I have seen is only in three parts. It's planted evidence, it's desperate evidence, and in the long run, it's no evidence. I guess we're talking about the Glock firearm. We're going to talk a lot about that. But we know that this is a gun that was also used by Joan. We know it's a gun that was also accessible by Joan. That shell casing is the sort of suspect evidence that only happens in a movie. Except, unfortunately, this is real life. The most ridiculous piece of evidence I've ever heard in my life. The most obviously planted thing I've ever seen is this. It is actually ridiculous. What do we know about Joan? Joan makes threats. And those are not distant threats that are unconnected over time. There is a constant presence of Joan, malicious presence of Joan, in Chris's life after they split up. She is not happy. We heard that she was prosecuted. She doesn't get uh, benefits because it turns out that their marriage was invalid because she was married to another guy. This is not somebody with a whole lot of credibility. They would say the dog tags were planted by Joan. The evidence was all smoke and mirrors. The bullet, it couldn't have been linked to Christian's gun. Anyway, it was planted and the cell phone data was misleading. At the trial, Christian would take the stand in his own defense. We've heard testimony and there are exhibits that show that you were actually calling, calling Calvin Phillips as a defense witness. Yes, definitely. Why? He's, he was kind of a key witness and there had also been a prosecutorial misconduct in uh, unlawful command and influence hearing, a big one. Um, and in that testimony, Captain Garrett said that Calvin was the reason that the court martial had come about. He, he had talked to Calvin, and Calvin had said this and told him about that and all that. Well, my private investigators had interviewed Calvin, and we have his audio that was actually played on Channel 4 Nashville, and he denied all that. So it, it, I needed Calvin not only to show that Jones' accusations were right. So he was key for me to disprove Jones. They're saying you went across the street and killed Calvin Phillips that morning. No, I did not. It's, it's ludicrous. Stupid. I didn't do it. And the evidence shows I haven't done it. All this technology that I didn't even know existed proves I, where I was at and what I was doing. And what were you 
rather than killing someone across the street, what were you actually doing in your house? Laura and I were hanging out and celebrating our, our anniversary, hanging out together. I'm asking you straight, right now. Yeah. Did you sneak out of your house that night? No, I didn't sneak out of my house that night. I, it was with Laura. Did you somehow take a car from across the street or from some other location and drive it out there? No. You can see the video of our cars. Nothing moves that night. Did you have anything to do with that arson out there, miles from your house? No, I, I don't know anything about any of this stuff, but other than what I've read over the last couple of years. I, this is... In June 2021, Christian Kit Martin was found guilty on all charges. We, the jury, find the defendant, Christian Martin, guilty of murder under instruction number four. It is. As to verdict form two, we, the jury, find the defendant, Christian Martin, guilty With the jury recommending life without parole. He was found guilty on all three counts of murder, two counts of first degree burglary, arson, criminal attempt to commit arson, and three counts of tampering with evidence. The sentencing will take place this September. So, uh, there you have it. Quite, um, quite a strange uh, case, huh? I think you'd agree a hell of a lot of unanswered questions in this old one. You think everything on it would become clear when the trial happens, but no, not in this one. I mean, Christian, he had the means and the motive to do what was done hell. He was, you know, he was a ranger, so he would know how to do this kind of stuff. So probably, you know, he did it, but uh, just beyond? Did he do it beyond a reasonable doubt? I don't know. The defense didn't really convince me, though, that Joan, you know, could and would do it. She hated him, sure, but... A killer? I got a feeling more will come out about this case uh, someday, and there are so many twists and turns in this one already. Hey, why not add a few more? Thank you so much for being uh, here with me. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this old video. Uh, here, go on. I'll see you as always real soon in the next old one. Till then, please look after yourselves. Take care. Mike out.